So I'd like to go back and, and if you can remember what it was that triggered your interest first in science and then geology. Well, I, as a kid, I was interested in collecting rocks and, and fossils, mostly rocks and minerals. Um, I have to tell you, I can't remember why that was. Um, and then through high school, I kind of lost that interest, um, but I re retained an interest in science and physics in particular, um, partly because I was interested in music and I was interested in the relationship between mm. physics and music and sound. And, I, and as I started university, which was in a physics program, I realized that the science was a little bit abstract for my liking. And as I was looking for around for other scientific disciplines to pursue, I remembered my interest in geology. And, and it struck me as being something that was a little bit more grounded, something I could sink my teeth into a little bit more, get outside, uh, get my hands on the material I was studying. And um, as I started taking some, some geology courses, I realized that that was the place for me. What was it about geology that attracted you, that, that made it so fascinating? Well, I think part of it was the fact that um, it, it's, it's an area of, of, of science where, where you apply physics, you apply chemistry, you apply biology in my case, all focused on, on, on the planet, and they all come together in, in an integrated system. And I think that's one of the things that interests me most, is being able to apply different disciplines all to, to a common problem of understanding uh, the way the planet works. It's interesting because we you know, think of geology as rocks, that's, that's it. But you're saying it's a, it extends much further out. Than oh, you. much further out. My, my main research area now is paleontology. I study the history of life and the interaction between organisms and the environments in which they were living, how those changed through time. Um, one of the main focuses of my research now is, is a mass extinction event, uh, the one that happened in the late Ordovician about 445 million years ago. And it's a mass extinction event w which was driven by on-Earth processes. There were no meteorite impacts that we know of. It was, a, it was a mass extinction driven by climate change and ocean circulation change. And so I'm interested in how the, the changes in biodiversity, how the, the patterns of extinction and recovery relate to the environmental changes that were taking now, place. Now, we know that there are, have been these extinction, uh, uh, major extinction events in the past. How many species disappear from the fossil record when these uh, phases happen? Well, the one that I'm studying, we think that at the level of species, I think it's somewhere in the order of about 75% of the, of, the, of the species that were around became extinct. Wow. Um, it's, it varies from one, from one event to another. Um, and, and one of the things that we're really interested in is trying to understand the rate of extinction um, and, and, and the, the, how the pattern of extinction varies in different parts of the world and how it varies in different environments. Now, are these uh, extinction... Uh, episodes were they primarily focused on or concentrated on marine animals or land plants or I mean or were they kind of general extinctions? Well the one that I've been studying in, in the late part of the Ordovician period was a time when we have virtually no record of life on land. It's before the advent of visible land plants and before the animals followed the plants onto land. So it's an exclusively marine event as we mm. understand it because that's where we, we have no record of mm -hmm. there must have probably was life on land but it must have been all microbial at the time and once you have these catastrophic uh, losses of, of species how long does it take for life to recover from that well that's one of the things that we're really focusing on is looking at the at the rates of recovery um, and and part of the the problem in terms of understanding that question is, is understanding geologic time. And so another area of my research is trying to understand rates of geological processes, looking at trying to, trying to define episodes of geological time as precisely as we can, so that we can address that very question of rates. We think in this particular instance, amongst the organisms that I study, um, which are a group of, of marine invertebrates, we think that, that the, re the re full recovery of biodiversity probably took on the order of somewhere in the vicinity of a three or four million years, possibly more. So it was a very slow process. Um, and, and part of it is recovery of, of number of species. But in the, in the group of organisms that I study, there was a great disparity of form. There were a lot of different sorts of animals with very different body plans, very different ecologies, we think. 
And so one of the things that we're looking at is not only the recovery of number of species, but the recovery of ecological diversity as well, which is, we, we have to measure it in a different way. So after these, you know, I think most people are more familiar with the, the, the most recent extinction crisis when the dinosaurs right. disappeared. Um, the, the, when you get the recovery, now the recovery is with totally different creatures from right. the spectrum that existed beforehand. Yeah, the event that I'm looking at is 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 a little different, um, and it, although the total number of species that became extinct at the time was a little bit greater than the one that that killed off the dinosaurs, the the impact on its eco on the ecology of the planet was a little bit less actually. In other words, the most of the organisms that re-evolved were primarily from the same groups that dominated huh. before the event. Although at at lower at levels of for example, family, and they, they were all completely different. Um, but the, the basic organization of ecosystems was not much different than it was before, although at the species level it was, it was completely right, different. Right, right. But certainly in terms of the, the evolution of vertebrates after the dinosaurs disappeared, it's yes. been quite remarkably different. It, it, yes, it was, it, it, and, and so the, the succession of mass extinction events has certainly had a very profound impact on, on sort of the trajectory of the history of life. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been a very important, and, and, and that's one of the things that we're interested in, is how does the, how does the ecological diversity recover, and how, you know, how, how does it compare with, with before the extinction, and... Um, and also, how does that vary geographically in different parts of the world, in different climate belts, and so on? Um, and again, a, a, a good time frame, a, a good understanding of the succession of intervals of time is critical in order to compare different geographic Absolutely. regions at the same time intervals. So would you, a lot of people are suggesting we're going into the sixth major extinction uh, episode. Would you, would you agree based on your studies? Are we entering that phase? It's... Um, it, it would appear that way in, in general. It's a little bit difficult to make comparisons because most of what we understand in terms of ancient extinction events, particularly in the marine record, it, the, the marine fossil record is, is fairly um, selective in terms of what it preserves. It preserves more, mainly things with, with shells and, and with bones and so on. And so when we see the extinction event of, of for example, the end of the Cretaceous in the marine record, it's fairly dramatic organisms, large sort of coiled shelled ammonites and, and other sorts of organisms that became extinct. And um, organisms that were rare at the time probably became extinct or soft-bodied. Um, and, and for example, the record of birds, for example, is, is, is quite an incomplete record. And so when we, when we look at, at the modern extinctions and we tally um, rate of extinction of certain land plants or insects, um, which are probably being very heavily, um, heav suffering quite heavily in the modern mm -hmm. extinction. There are organisms that have a very poor fossil record. And so if, if, w if we were able to compare modern extinction and clams or something like that, which have a good fossil record, it would be much easier to make that comparison. Um, and so I think it's a sort of, th time will have to tell whether or not the, we can compare the modern extinctions in terms of how what, what the fossil record is that's left um, com ed by comparison with the old ones, certainly among large vertebrates like elephants and giraffes and so on, as far as the fossil record is concerned, they may already be extinct. In other words, they're so rare, the chances of them leaving a fossil is almost negligible because it's mainly abundant organisms that, mm -hmm. that are preserved in the fossil record. Um, and, so, um, and, and so, as I said, time will tell as to whether the, the fossil record of what we're doing now is, is as clear as it has been, say, for the end of the Cretaceous or, the, or some of the earlier ones. Unfortunately, we're not going to be around for that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're probably right, yeah. You know, I, I've been heartened to realize that there is a rebounding of life after these very catastrophic declines. And whether or not humans are responsible for the current loss of biodiversity... Uh, I was trying the other day to feel good about the fact that, oh, well, if we disappear in five or ten million years, there'll be other life forms that will have reoccupied the oceans and the, and the land after we're gone. But somehow that wasn't as satisfying. Uh, well, I, I, I agree. As you say, it's not very satisfying because <laughs> if we're the ones that are causing this event, it, because it'll certainly impact our own Absolutely. future trajectory. Yeah. And, and this is something that we obviously have to be... 
have, have to be concerned yeah. about. And to, but what I find interesting about studying these, these ancient events is, is as, as we're seeing in the world now, where, where the whole biosphere is interacting with the changes in the environments, this is what we're looking at in the distant past, is how does biodiversity, how does the history of ecosystems, how do these respond to major environmental changes? And that's, what one of, that's what's attracting me now to the research that I'm doing. I can't imagine anything more relevant to the kind of problems that we face today. Right. It's a great area. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.